The next step is inventory analysis. Here are an example to show the improvement and uh, some few parameters in that cycle. And we can easily find different from other conventional life cycle analysis. Our models pay more attention to exposure concentrations and uh, environmental pollution. For example, we collect the information such as the number of workers and uh, working duration, working frequency, working time. Overall, life cycle analysis can help us to investigate the source and the concentration of environmental pollution. However, when people are at risk, we usually concern more about the possibility of risk and the severity of the damage. Hence, choose of the health risks that residents care about when applying probabilistic risk models proposed by the U.S. Environmental Production Agency. It was usually performed with four steps, hazard identification, those response assessment, exposure assessment, and risk characterization. And based on the three elements of risk, we usually divide the pathways into inhalation, ingestion, and thermal intake. As for the exposure receptor, we usually consider the workers and general public as our objects. An important step in probabilistic risk assessment is exposure assessment. Here, we need to calculate the exposure dose of environmental concentrations. Here, I need the three sets of calculating questions, which put forward from three kinds of exposure pathways. And here is their meaning. The next step is risk characterization, as is known to us all. Health risks induced by environmental pollution can be divided into carcinogenic and non carcinogenic health risks. Therefore, we discuss them separately as well. As for the comparison of the health risks, we use the index risk proposed by the U.S. Environmental Protection. Protection Agency. For example, for the levels of carcinogenic health risk, if the risk is less than 10 to the power of minus 6, indicating that the harm is acceptable, and if the risk is greater than 10 to the power of minus 6, but less than 10 to the power of minus 4, indicating there is a potential risk, and if the risk is greater than 10 to the power of minus 4, Noting that it is a serious risk. The situation is the same in non carcinogenic health risk as the threshold in one. Two of the uncertainty existed in the assessment process. The Monte Carlo method was applied. And in this case, sensitivity analysis can help us investigate the most significant exposure parameters. The above-mentioned process is how we evaluate the health risks and concentrations of environmental pollution. Here, in order to tightly link the health risks, health impacts with industrial development and policy formulations, health impacts models were introduced. That is to translate health risk values into disability adjust that year and we need to pay indicator. To realize this transformation, here are three steps. Categorization, characterization, and quantitative evaluation. And characterization can be divided into phase effects and damage analysis. In categorization, we know that long-term exposure to environmental pollution would arouse different diseases in terms of their different carcinogenic mechanisms. Thus, in our former studies, we usually consider four types of carcinogenic diseases, global warming-related diseases, 
respiratory and circulatory system damage and pathogenic effect. Here, the most important thing is dividing the environmental pollution into their corresponding communal diseases. For example, it is demonstrating that sulfur dioxide would arouse the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, pulmonary heart disease, and acute respiratory infection. In characterization and quantitative evaluation, to realize these two equations, we need to find the values of risk factor, defect factor, and the damage factor at first. And uh, to monetize the disability adjusting that year into winning this two case. This paper, we need to find out the YSLY. YSLY here means the annual average of statistical net year. And the YSL means value of statistical net year. We usually calculate the YSLY of Chinese residents based on the YSL of American residents with the consideration and of inflation and the purchasing power parity method. Overall, what we have mentioned about is how we evaluate the health impacts of COVID in energy industry in China. To verify the feasibility of our models, a series of case studies have been conducted. The first case study is coal mining. It was conducted in a coal mine which located in Shanxi province, China. As shown in this picture, four workplaces and 21 work types were divided. And after utilization of models, we can easily find that the dust concentration in coal base is at the range of 3.35 to 16.85 milligram per cubic meter. And after applying the health risk assessment, we could find that no health driver suffered from the greatest health risk. And the disability adjusting that year was calculated as well. The dust related health impacts from that to scale in this coal mine is Shenfei, Kofei, Shanxi Point, and Short Creating. The sensitivity analysis assessment shows that working duration is the most significant parameter in coal mines. The second objective is coal fire power generation. As shown in this framework picture, we usually divide the coal fire ge power generation into four steps coal mining, transportation, combustion, dust disposal. And in this research, we discuss seven kinds of environmental pollution and divide the terminal diseases into three types, global warming related diseases, circulatory and respiratory system damage. After applying our models, we could find that in this coal fired power plant, the most serious Process and the terminal diseases were coal combustion and respiratory diseases. And among seven kinds of airborne pollutants, sulfur dioxide has the greatest greatness to pay values. The third example is a new emerging coal chemical in China. Coal liquefaction, which can convert coal into oil products to investigate the health impacts of dust, noise, toxic, and harmful substances in coal refractory system demonstration project that is direct reproduction, indirect reproduction, and coal oil compensation were chosen as the objects. As shown, we can divide the coal reproduction into four steps, coal mining, coal washing, coal transportation, and production. And after using my models, we can find that the core oil coal processing is more, is more environment friendly than direct and indirect reproduction. And the toxic and harmful gases 
is the most serious substances, coal mining and processing, coal transportation, coal processing and coal production contribute the most to the willingness to pay values. Overall, Serious of case studies have proven that the models we propose are feasible and available to evaluate the health impact of coal battery energy industry. And I'll discuss them detailedly in the following aspects. First of all, life cycle analysis can integrate numerous types of environmental pollution in various processing substages, help us to investigate the districts and the work types most affected by toxic and harmful substances. The second one, different from deterministic risk assessment, applying probability distributions of input parameters is useful to simulate the individual exposure levels. And sensitivity analysis could help us to investigate the Social parameters which contribute the most to health risk. And at last, health impact models can compare the severity of health damages on the same scale, which makes the results more visible and accessible. And we need to pay and uh, disability adjusted next year represents economic thought and methods respectively. It is more intuitive and understandable than individual health risk values. Overall, there is strong reason to believe that our models is meaningful, both in practical and theoretical. Thus, I will propose our implications from three aspects. First of all, environmental change charting. Our research can show enterprises the substages and occupants with severe health impact and provide insights for air pollution monitoring. And second one is government policy making. We believe our results will provide guidance for establishing and revising environmental laws, emission standards in coal based energy industry. And the last one is social mobilization promoting. As our research can investigate the effectiveness of coal based energy industry, which can help to establish scientific cognition of coal based energy and help the related companies to grasp the declarations of industrial development. However, some gaps still exist in our current research. For example, we just consider coal mining, coal manufacturing, and coal cell power generation. Environmental pollution, such as particulate matter, dust, and noise, are considered. And as for the exposure pathway for airborne pollutants, we usually consider incarnation impact. Thus, in the future, to deepen and extend our study, we will discuss more types of coal based in energy industry, such as coal gasification. More types of environmental pollution would be included, such as vibration and thermal radiation. Exposure pathways such as oral impact and thermal impact would be included as well. Okay, that is all my presentation. Once again, I would like to thank the MIT ASAS conference for giving me the chance to talk to you. Have a good day and thanks for listening.